Do you want to wish a friend or someone you know really well a happy birthday? Well, I have a solution for you, because instead of lighting real fireworks to wish them, why not code fireworks? Because, you know, that way, you'd not only not be hurting the environment, but you'd also be learning Paper.js. So what is Paper.js? Paper.js is a really cool JavaScript library that lets you create vector graphics for websites. Now for this video, you can either code along with me, or you can just grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and watch me code some beautiful fireworks. So I hope you enjoy! So I'm going to do some quick drawings to kind of demonstrate how exactly our fireworks is going to work before we start coding, so we can get a better idea of what we need to do to make this look like a realistic firework. So essentially, initially, we have a particle that moves from the bottom to the top. And at some point, this particle decides to explode. And when this particle explodes, it creates more particles that surround the exploded particle. Now we're going to call this circular formation a layer. And a firework can have any number of layers. So in this example, this firework has three layers. Now one thing to keep in mind is that every individual particle has different paths. We'll demo into the details of how exactly this works, but essentially, the initial velocity of the particle is dependent on the angle at which this particle is placed in the layer. Every non-explosive particle, or every particle that forms after an explosion, can have something that we're gonna call a trail. And a trail is essentially sort of like a path that the particle has taken in the past. And as the particle falls more and more down, new trails start forming, but the old trails start fading out. And the reason for having these trails is that it creates a really cool 3D effect, and I guess it just makes it look more like a realistic firework. So let's go to paper.js.org slash download to download paper.js. We're gonna get the latest version and we should see a .zip file in our downloads folder. Now we just extract this zip file and go to the disk directory. Here we're just gonna move the paper-full.min.js file to its parent directory. And then we can just remove all the other folders and files. Now we create a folder named JS where we're gonna keep all our JavaScript files and then we move the paper.js file into this folder. And then we create another file are named index.html. We open the HTML file in VS Code. In the head tag, we import acorn, which will allow us to use classes while using paper.js, and then paper.js, which we get from the folder we created, and myscript.js, which we will be creating in just a second. And for our body, all we're going to have is a resizable canvas with an ID of my canvas where we'll be drawing our fireworks using paper.js. We set the width and height of the canvas to the entire view, and get rid of any margin, padding, or overflow for the body. Next, we create the mascript.js file where we'll have all our JavaScript code that uses the paper.js library. So in paper.js, there's something called paths, and these paths essentially represent different shapes, such as lines, circles, rectangles, etc. So by default, paper.js has a white background. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the background to black by drawing a rectangular path that covers the entire screen. So our program is going to need to generate random numbers pretty often. So we're going to create a helper function to generate a random number. And then we create a class representing a particle. The constructor for this class is going to have a lot of variables with default values, so we can make our firework as customizable as possible. First off, we have variables for the x and y positions, velocities and accelerations. We create some variables for setting properties of particle location after explosion, a variable indicating when we want the particle to explode, a variable for the initial color of the particle, variables for the alpha color value change, the size, the minimum size, and the size change of the explosive particle, the non-explosive particle, and the trail. Whether the particle has already exploded, whether the particle is explosive, and the spread size or radius of the particle. 
we'll get a better idea of each of these variables as we dive more deep into this project. Also, all of these variables have default values. Okay, so next, we set the particle's properties to the values passed into the constructor. Then we set current frame to zero, and this variable essentially indicates how many times the particle has been updated. We set trail to an empty array, and path, which is the path of the particle, to a circle based on the x, y, and size properties. Then, if the particle is not explosive, or in other words, if the particle emerged right after an explosion of an explosive particle, then we push a path to the trail. I'll get back to why exactly we do that in a few minutes. If the particle is explosive, or in other words, if the particle has the potential to explode to produce more particles, then we set the value for random spread, layers, and particles per layer. And then we set the path color based on the hue, saturation, and brightness or HSB values of the init color variable. Okay, so we've created the constructor for the class. Now we create a function named update to update the properties of the class every frame. Here's where we're going to be magicians and code some immaculate, impeccable fireworks. First off, we increment current frame and we update the size of the particle, but we don't let the size of the particle get smaller than the minimum size. Then we update the particle's velocities based on its accelerations and the particle's positions based on its velocities. We update the particle's color as well. So for non-exposed particles that still have a trail, we're going to update the trail. So if the particle is still visible, we create a path for a trail spec and we push the trail spec to the array only if the trail is viewable. Also, we use the sparkliness property in the if statement to make it such that in some random cases, the particle is not generated. This creates a really cool sparkly effect. Now, we write some code to update the alpha value of every trail spec since we want the trail to sort of fade away. And we also delete a trail spec if it is currently not viewable because it's too faded out or too small. So remember how in the beginning of the video I said that the velocities had different x and y components? Well, even though that is true, the magnitude of the velocity for every particle still stays the same. Okay, so if we're given the angle that we want the velocity to be in, and the magnitude of the velocity, then we can find the x and y components of the velocity, because the y component would be v sin theta, and the x component would be v cosine theta. And the value of theta ranges from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So what if the particle is explosive? Well, if it is, and if it's time to explode, and the particle has not exploded yet, then we set exploded to true, and then we essentially loop to every layer, and we go to every incremental angle, and then we randomize the angle based on the random spread variable. And then, based on the logic that we just described, we set the values for the x and y components of the particle's velocity. But we also add some randomness to it by multiplying it by a number that's close to 1. And then finally, we can push this particle, but we pass in all the required variables into the particle constructor. And we push this particle into a particles array, and we're going to define this array in the main program. Finally, if this particle has exploded, and if this particle is not visible, and if this particle has no trail, then this function is going to return true, which essentially indicates that this particle can be deleted. Now we create a function in the main program that lets the user generate a firework by clicking the space key. So we create a particle object and assign it to p, and then we push p to particles. Now we define the particles array, and we define i and should delete, which we'll be using in the onFrame function. Okay, so here in the view.onFrame function, we set i to 0 and we loop to every particle in the particles array. And we call the particles update function and we store the return value of the function. And based on the return value of the function, we can figure out if the particle needs to be deleted. So if should delete is true, then we just remove the value stored in the particle's path and we remove the particle 
from the particles only. And then we just increment i. Okay, so we're finally done with the code, and now we get to see the result of all our hard work. So when I click the space key, okay, we see a particle go up, and then boom, fireworks. It's actually beautiful. So what I actually did was I created a bunch of firework types and actually named them. Yes, you can admire my beautiful naming skills. So here's Mr. Sparkles, and then Big Bob, Tiny Tim, Weirdo, Waterfall, and Mando. So I put all of these into if statements to kind of generate a random type of firework every time you click the space key. I hope you guys found this video fun and helpful. I'm trying to make this channel more like a project based channel where I essentially work on different projects and like share how I made them. So you should consider subscribing so you won't miss out on these new videos.